you're not going anywhere, uh, meet up here. Amen? And uh, so get with... Um, Oh, let Brother Dave know, okay, because he's kind of helping out with that. And uh, if, you, if you're not going anywhere specifically, uh, then meet here. Amen? I know you'll have a good time. All right, I'll, actually, why don't you turn your Bibles to Matthew chapter 16 and verse number 6, because that's where we're going to start at. Um, we're going to talk about something here tonight that uh, I think is... It's it's important and necessary. Uh, this this sermon is called "Trumped: Delusion of Choice," hypnotized by the Hegelian dialectic. Amen. All right, and uh, I believe a lot of people got trumped, and uh, absolutely. So, uh, and I, you know. I couldn't make the title long enough or the teaching long enough, really, to explain everything that went on with this whole show. Um, I think Trump was nothing more than the Jesuits' ace in the hole. Um, but it's it's classic what took place here, this Hegelian dialectic. And you say, well, what is that? Well, I'm going to inform you what that is. It's age old. But did you know that it didn't start with this man named Hegelian or, or Hegel, it didn't start with him. They actually, I mean, it's satanic is what it is, but it goes back to Plato. Plato did it. And you know what? He said that there'd be a new world order eventually that would be ran by the elite, and this is how it would work. Right? The new Atlantis, right? So, anyway... Um, I want to explain to you from the Word of God here and show you examples of this later and then show you. And I'm going to read a lot of stuff. And unfortunately, it's kind of a there's a lot of things that you're just going to have to bear with as I read through them. But I want you to understand what really took place, how you you are in a mind control experiment. All right. He's smiling at me. Anyway, um, <laughs> you you are a mind control experiment. That's that's exactly what that's exactly what you have been. That's what the American politics are. That's what the electorate is. It's nothing more than a mind control experiment. And and you know what? When you start to learn the truth of this, instead of being mad at the preacher that brings you the truth, you ought to be mad at the devil and the fact that you were deceived by him. Because that's really what the point is, what people don't get, that this is all a game to these people. It's nothing more than a game with them, and they're mocking you. All right, so Matthew chapter 16, verse number 6. Then Jesus said unto them, Take heed and beware of the leaven of the Pharisees and of the Sadducees. Wait a minute, what, what, who are the Pharisees and the Sadducees? Well, they're nothing more than, than the biblical example of this Hegelian dialectic. That's what they are. They were a group of people... Two groups of people that you had to either follow one side or the other. And if you didn't, who were you? Well, you were Jesus Christ, and then you were crucified. Got it? See how it worked? If you weren't part of their systems, then you're just wrong. And what did Jesus come? Straight through the middle with the law of God. And said, no, I don't, no you're wrong, and you're wrong. And this is the truth of the Scriptures. And that's the same, th and it's, it's age old, nothing's changed, it's the same game that was played back then, is being played now right before people's eyes. The Bible says very clearly, thou shalt not follow a multitude to do evil, neither shalt thou speak in a cause to decline after many to rest judgment. What happened last night? Millions of people followed a multitude to do evil. It's followed right along with it. Oh, let me vote for this man. Why? Well, because, why, what's the number one reason for voting for him? Because he's not Hillary. You just fell for the Hegelian dialectic. You were thrown into two systems, right? And, and you were ping-ponged in there, and then you just chose one. Because you were told that's your only choice. These two are your only choice. That's it, just these two. There's no other choice. These two. It's a scam. But there is a choice. You know what the choice is? Follow the Lord Jesus Christ. Follow the truth of the Scriptures. Let's pray first. Father, Lord, we pray you be with us now. I pray, Lord, that I could explain this well enough that they would understand it, Lord, 
and that people that hear it would break free from this mind control game. This game of chess that the devil is playing. Many lives are destroyed by this. Many millions of people have lost their lives because of this game. It's not a game to us, Lord, but it is to these that follow Satan. Help us now, Lord, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. So what is this Hegelian dialectic? What, what is it exactly? What, it's, it's the controlling of modern society. It's the absolute controlling of modern society today. So I'm going to read you something here by General Maddox here. What exactly is the Hegelian dialectic? Hegel was a 19th century German philosopher who devised a particular dialectic or method of argument for resolving disagreements. His method of arriving at the truth by the exchange of logical arguments is a system of thought process still in use to this day. To put it simply, the basis of Hegelianism dictates that the human mind can't understand anything unless it can be split into two polar opposites. Good, evil, right, wrong, left, right. So what are they saying? Basically that, well, okay, so if Hillary's bad, then Trump is good. Uh-uh. They're both wicked as hell. God's word says they're both devils. They're both wicked. Yeah, but the Hegelian dialectic has trained you to believe what? Well, bad, good. I, even heard, I heard a lady say this one time that was a Republican. Democrats, bad. Republicans, good. I, I remember her saying it like that, and I'm like, really? Because most Repu many of those elite white Republicans are pedophiles. Yep, right, right. Yep, yep. They're wicked murderers. Yep, right. They're alcoholics. They're drunks. They're womanizers. They're fornicators. They're homosexuals. They're sodomites. And they hate God. Right. No, no. Democrats, good. Republicans, bad. Whatever. Vice versa. Who Pick a side. It doesn't matter. They're both the same. They're both evil. But what do they say? Well, if you don't understand, and then if you say this, and I'll, I'll probably double back on this and just bear with me because i got to get through this. If you say this, well, no, I, would, I, I wouldn't vote for Trump. He's wicked as hell. Why would I vote for him? I don't want to see. I mean, he's a, he's a loser. You just like, like one guy said, this is exact words. You're just mad because you're going to lose your Obamacare, isn't it? That's what you're mad about. You're going to lose your Obamacare and you're, so how did you equate with me being against Trump as me being for Obamacare? I'll tell you why. The Hegelian dialectic. Right. You've been trained that if, well, if you're against, oh, if you're against uh, Hillary, then you're for Trump. If you're against, if you're for, if you're against Trump, then you're for Obamacare. No, that doesn't mean that. Where do you get that lot? That's not even logical. Why? Why would I be for that when I think they're both of Devils. I think they're both wrong. In fact, I know they're both wrong based on my absolute authority of the Word of God. They're both wrong. But the Hegelian dialectic tells you, no, your mind has been trained to believe that one is good and one is wrong. And not both are evil. You so say, what do you mean? Well, that's how people justify all the wickedness of Donald Trump. Yeah, we're all just sinners, so that's... Oh, okay. What is that? That's the gray area that the Hegelian dialectic teaches, too. That's Plato's area. That's the same... It's the same old... It's... Listen, this world is ran by a bunch of satanic philosophers. That's all it is. It's a bunch of philosophy from hell. That's all it is. And I'm so tired of it. I'm so tired of seeing people fall for it, and nobody talk about it, and nobody wants to tell... it. Wait a minute. Like, how could you vote for either one of them? They're both wicked. I mean, don't you have any principles? Don't you believe in God? Don't you believe the Bible? Are, you said you're a Christian. Don't you believe it? Don't you believe what the Word of God says? Yeah, right. To put it simply, the basis, that's the basis. So that's how people think. There's only two categories. That's it. So how do you know that? Well, <laughs> that's why they can look at somebody like Assad and say, Assad's evil. Why? Because he doesn't want the government, he doesn't want the U.S. government over, over there trodding down his land and killing his people and, and invading his country. So Assad is out. Okay, so he's a good guy. No, that doesn't mean he's a good guy. He's wicked as hell, too. But there's, there, there's a difference in those two. There's a difference in the people can't think anymore. They cannot think. 
They just cannot think. They've been taught how to think this way. And you have to break them out of it. You have to learn to step back out of the box and say, no, I think you're both wicked. And you can't force me into your little box because I don't have to go. You know why people get mad at me? Because I won't go in their box. The Baptist brighters, they don't like me because I won't go in their box. I won't go in there. No, I'm not, I'm not, no, I don't believe you. I think you're wrong. Right, because the Bible says this, so I'm not going to go in there. You must be universal church then. Oh, man, we're going to get into a bunch of these tonight. You're going to be like, I can't believe it. For example, when people are talking about two political parties, labor or liberal, Republican or Democrat, what they're actually referring to without realizing it is the thesis and antithesis based upon the Hegelian dialectic. They're trained. Their mind is trained to just see those two things and no other option. Why do you think Ron Paul's campaign couldn't make it? Why do you think his platform did not make it? Because, because of the Hegelian dialectic. They could not break out of the, No, we can't do that. No, that's a Republican platform. That's a Democratic platform. No, the Democrats couldn't be right about that. Yeah, they are right about some things. Do you see what I mean? They are right about something. Stop lying. They are. It's plain come. And Ron Paul said, well, no, they're right. This is true. This is wrong. You can't do this. And that's why he was rejected. Yes, they do. I'm going to get to that. That's the whole basis of it is a false premise. When I have a false. Okay, I'll read on. And you, you'll start You'll start to get I'll read. I'm getting excited. I, I, I got to keep going because I don't know how long this is going to take. And I, it's a lot of reading and stuff. So the Okay. So the only real the only real debate that occurs is just the minor differences between the two parties. This is what I can't stand. <laughs> Nothing is said or done about the issues that neither left or right is discussing. This is in particular will become more apparent as the election draws near. So as we see, this is written before. But OK, so here's the thing. All right. They all talk. What's an example of that Republicans are against abortion and Democrats are for abortion. Ping pong, ping pong, ping pong, ping pong, Democrats. They're against it. They're for it. They're against it. They're for it. They're against it. For it. And none of them do anything about it. But what do they have you stuck in? The Hegelian dialectic. I have to vote for them because they're pro-life. I have to vote for them because they're pro-life. I have to vote for them because they're pro-life. I have. I can't stand it. It's insanity. I told you I'm gonna go. I, I'm just gonna. But they're not pro-life. They don't care. They're not doing anything about it. They had a Republican Congress, Republican Senate, Republican President, Republican Supreme Court. What do they do? Nothing but collect your money and make you look like an idiot. That's what they did. But, but the Democrats, no, no, there were no Democrats to stop them. No, no, nobody stopped them. They had it all. They didn't do anything. Why? The Galen dialectic. It's it's not. They don't really. They're just talking about something they differ about. They're not doing anything about anything. Do you understand? They bounce around the same idea, the idealistic ideas that they fight about, but they don't ever do anything about it because that's the whole plan. It's to do nothing but to control everything. They control the argument. Is this making sense? I really hope it is. I, I I really hope it's making sense because it makes perfect sense to me. When I when I look at it, it just it just it drives me crazy because people just they get stuck in there. It's sick. Both talk about it, never do anything about it. So really, they have your thinking locked into the right left paradigm, where neither side has any intentions of changing anything. It's a game they play to make money, but they get Americans caught up into it. So people ignore the actual facts. They don't step back and look at the facts. The fact is we had a Republican Congress and Senate. I already went through that. I'm not going to go through it again, but you understand that. The facts are ignored. All the facts are ignored. Everything. Nothing was done to make abortion legal or to save lives, because that's the Hegelian dialectic. That's what it's all about. Another form of the Hegelian dialectic is Problem, reaction, solution. Mo <laughs> What's that? 
Yeah, they didn't defund Planned Parenthood. Why? You had the purse strings, you're Congress. You have the control of the purse strings. Yeah, after the videos came out, but they're pro-life. They're pro-life. You didn't even, def they didn't have to vote for anything. They just had to not pay for it. They own the purse strings. They had them. Yeah, $500 million, and they didn't do a thing about it. Why? Hegelian dialectic. They know that you're a robot that's been programmed, and you won't break your programming. You'll do what you're told. That's why. Problem, reaction, solution. Wait to hear this. This is good. Most of us unwittingly fall victim to it all too often, and sadly, if we don't stop, we will continue to lose our free will and liberties. It has been widely used by our governments and corporations around the world. You could say that in terms of controlling the masses and society in general, its deployment has been an effective tool in keeping humanity in check. Almost all major events in history employ the Hegelian dialectic of problem. Does this sound familiar? Are you ready? Manufacture a crisis. Here's the problem. Manufacture a crisis or take advantage of one already in place in order to get the desired reaction of public outcry whereby the public demands a solution which has been predetermined from the beginning. Right. Yep. Yep. Oh, yeah, Pearl Harbor. Yeah, but 9-11. 9-11 is the perfect example of that. Right. What they do? What, what did Hillary Clinton say or was it Rahm Emanuel? Never let a good crisis go to waste. Why? Problem, reaction, solution. That was going to get to that, the Patriot Act. A classic example is 9-11. And when you break the left-right paradigm and come to the realization that the invasion of Iraq and Afghanistan and the whole fake and the whole thing was fake and not to mention contradictory, war on terror was the desired outcome for the neoconservatives in the Bush administration and the whole military-industrial complex. They, in fact, stated in their own papers the need for another catastrophe and catalyzing event like a new Pearl Harbor. That's right, Operation Northwoods, that's right. I mean, what is it, what's it called, Nor, what, what's that called again? Whew, the guys that, NORAD. NORAD tracks Santa Claus on his sleigh but can't track planes coming in. Stand down. Yeah, I mean, because, you know, you just have them stand down like, you know. And, and, and you know, I can see why, you, you know, it makes perfect sense why we went ahead and attacked Iraq, right? Because Iraq, it was proven that Iraq... That's where the that's where the terrorists came from, right? Oh no, they didn't. Did they come from Afghanistan? No, they didn't. Where'd they come from? Saudi Arabia, right? I mean, if you believe that. But anyway, the point is that it wasn't America. Or, or I mean it, it was America. They funded it. But it wasn't Iraq. It wasn't Afghanistan. Problem, reaction, solution. So what was the solution? The Patriot Act. Hey, we have to frisk your wife and your daughters at the airport now. Because you know, little children and women from America, they're the ones that carry bombs strapped to their body all the time and blow up airplanes, right? So I have to take x-rays and see them all naked in, or in order, I mean, that's just what we have to do, right? Really? What is that? It's problem, reaction, solution. How come, how come the Patriot Act was already drafted by a Jesuit and ready right away? Why was it ready? How could you make a bill that huge, ready, that quickly after? Why? Hegelian dialectic. Problem, reaction, solution. They created the problem. They see the reaction, and they have the solution then I control the whole dynamic. Well, what's the, pr what's the problem? Well, it's the war on terror. Well, who's terror and who are we at? Who's terror? Where's he at? Could you find me terror? Where's terror at? Terror, where are you? Oh, I get it. So some guy with a towel on his head was over there in a cave somewhere with remote controls. And like I've said a million times when I used to have, when I used to have Sprint, Right? When I used to have Sprint, I can't get a signal here. How in the world did he get one in a cave over there? He had Verizon, man. You get the that might now you might have a good point there. It might but this guy and he yeah, and he orchestrated all these 
So Saddam Hussein or Iraq or Afghanistan never attacked America, right? What was the reaction solution? Patriot Act. We have to protect you from the enemy that we created. So we passed the Patriot Act in order to do that, which was already written and ready within hours. And take away your liberty. But because the pre yeah, remember how the tel Taliban morphed into? Uh, I I know that. Yeah, uh, Hillary Clinton said that that uh, or no, George Bush created the tal the Taliban. Well, they create all their enemies. You have to understand, we create all our enemies because we control the problem, reaction, solution. So we create our own enemies. We prop them up, which I'm going to read you and prove here in a little while, and then we go fight them and kill them. But why are you killing us? I because we created you to kill you. So we have something to fight. That's the Hegelian dialectic. The Hegelian dialectic says you must always have enemies to fight. You always have to keep fighting. I don't know what you just said. But guess what happens, though? Because the premise was flawed, we fall, we fall for the solution and allow them to pass the Patriot Act to usurp the Constitution and take away our freedoms. Because everybody was, I'm serious, like I was one of the guys that was like, when I first saw that and I heard, and I watched that plane go into the building and all that kind of stuff and, and, and everything that I saw, there, I was just like, yeah, well, let's go kill them. Well, let's just go kill them. But they created it all. Problem, reaction, solution. Create the crisis. Right? Create the crisis. And then you get to come up with a solution. And you see the people's reaction is like, is a controlled reaction because you created the problem and you control the reaction and now you have the solution. So you stay in control and nobody uses their mind. Nobody thinks. Nobody uses their brain. That's the Hegelian dialectic. Yep. Never mind that Saudi Arabia had more to do with it than Saddam Hussein did. And never mind Saddam committed the worst sin ever. What was that? Wanting to change his oil money from the dollar to another form of currency. And if you mess with the currency, you're going to get some democracy dropped on you. You need Oh, you need some liberty? Right? You need some liberty? We're going to give you some liberty. We're going to make you free. Mm-hmm. Never mind Building 7 was never hit by anything. Just fell. Never mind they said pull it. Never mind the facts that we the fact that we sent boots on the ground and invaded a country that had nothing to do with 9-11 at all. Absolutely nothing to do with it at all. But every Christian in America was ready to kill the brown people. I'm sorry, that's the truth. And what do we have now? What's been going on? We've had eight years of a racist, wicked, effeminate president that hated white people. And now what do we have? Just what I told you we were going to have 18 months ago. We got a guy that rode in the white rage straight into the White House. And what's he going to do? World War III, baby. Go after the Muslims and crush them. Kill them all. Fat Albert Pike said it long ago. Kill them all. Problem, reaction, solution. Yeah, and then you have the Temple Mount, right, which is another story altogether, that the Pope wants. He wants to sit there saying he is God. Here's a more current example of the Hegelian dialectic in use. Uh, he mentions uh, something in Australia, a present, both of the main political parties on the eve of the upcoming election, September 7th, they're discussing the boat people, which is a derogatory term used to describe refugees and asylum seekers displaced by war or other hardships. That's what they call them, the boat people, yeah. I don't believe they constitute what you would call a crisis, he says, as the statistics clearly show they aren't. But for the purpose of this example, our government is telling us they are a problem. The media is used to play up this problem in order to instigate a reaction, a debate, in the public domain on how to tackle it. But the opposition and ruling party offer the solution. Again, we see that the only real debate occurring is just the minor differences between the two parties, and nothing is said or done about the many other important issues that neither left nor right discuss. 
It's all a shell game. It's all, we'll tell you what to think and we'll tell you what to be angry about. We'll foment white rage and make you mad. We'll show black people doing the knockout game on white people. We'll show that as if that's like most of America, that black people are just running around punching white, old white ladies in the head. As if that's just like normal everyday behavior of black people. That's the dumbest thing I've ever heard. That's not normal behavior from black. They don't walk around and punch old grandmas in the face. That's not normal behavior. But it's, it's fomented. It's what you see. It's what you're being to. So we can problem, reaction, solution. How many times do you think these men are going to watch if, if these rioters get up there and these black folks and other folks start to riot? How, how, how long before white rage starts getting up and they know it and they, and they, they push it? Because that's all you see. So then what's gonna, something's got to be done. These cops are getting killed. Black people are killing cops. Minorities are killing cops. We got to do something about it. Bring the military in. Federalize the police completely. Let me tell you something. What Obama could not accomplish, a white, rich billionaire will. You mark my words. What that black man could not accomplish in that office, that white man will do a hundred times worse under the guise of being a good Christian president. Yep. That's right. Okay, I got one for you. Who stole more of your liberties? A white man or a black man in the last 16 years? The figurehead, that is. Which one? Which one? The Christian, white, Protestant. He signed the, he signed the executive orders. He, he put the Patriot Act in place. He did all of that. Obama didn't do any of that. He just walked right in and said, okay, well, I'm going to go with this. Who created Homeland Security? Do you think... Do you think, now listen to me, this is getting too deep for some people, and I know I'm going to get in trouble probably, but do you think that a black guy could have pulled that off? Do you think he could have pulled that off in the white? Do you think he could have pulled off Homeland Security? Uh-uh. There would have been a revolt like you wouldn't believe. But he pulled it off. Why? Because it was all part of the plan. It was the Hegelian dialectic. He had to fix everything. He had to, he had, there was problem, reaction, solution. That's right. That's exactly what it is. You know, this man says, in order to avoid falling victim to the Hegelian dialectic from now on, you must remember the process involved. Anytime a major problem or issue arises in society, think about who will gain or profit from it. You got to step back and look at the issue and say, well, who gains and profits from all this? So then I look at it and I say, well, who gains and profits off this race war? Oh, no, George Soros is just a peon. He's nobody. He's just part of the he's part of the infrastructure, but he will do what he's told or they will flatten him. They will take his money and they will beat him down to nothing. He is nothing. He is just part of the prongs on that billionaire figurehead. They're all the same. They don't. Li what's that? He answers to this, right, okay, listen to me. Here, here's the thing, okay? You've got billionaires that are Republicans. You've got billionaires that are Democrats, okay? You've got billionaires that are whatever they call themselves. Uh, they're Protestants, they're Catholics, everything. But they all work for the same people, and they're, they're, they don't differ on much. They jockey for position in that skeleton, and that's all they do. But really, they there's no difference in substance. They are all, this, they don't care about ideologies. They know you care about ideologies. They, they're, they're, they're not driven by that. They know they already are part of the ruling class. They don't even care what you, they don't, they don't care about any of these issues. They don't care about losing a billion dollars supporting Hillary and watching a billion dollars go. They don't care about that. It's all part of the game. Yeah, they'll make it back. Well, George, the, the stock market crash, guarantee you George Soros bought all that. He didn't lose any money. 
He got it back. That was his gift. He bought it back. He bought it back low. It's going to skyrocket. He'll sell it. All his money's back. And then some. See how it works? Problem, reaction, solution. That's how it works. It's not popular to find out that you've just been a pawn in a game, is it? That you were told that these two are the people that you have to vote for. Because uh, after all, if you don't vote for Trump, then you're, that's a vote for Hillary. I mean, do you know how to do simple math or no? I mean, you do realize that simple math would tell you that that is just asinine. That is the height of stupidity. To tell somebody, well, if you don't vote for Trump, then you're voting for Hillary. Hegelian dialectic. Yeah. And by the way, everyone knew that he was... That he was full of nonsense, too, when he had developed this. He popularized this, I should say. All right. When you do this from now on, you'll quickly see the real truth instead of the false truth. When you remove yourself from the equation and take a step back to look at it from a third-party perspective, see the so-called problem and look at who is reacting, why, and in what way. Then look for who is offering up the solution. Okay, so here's how these two people are acting over it. They're going nuts. Well, who's offering the solution? Check it out. Because they have the best, they, they have the most to benefit from the solution. So they offer their solution. The, the Hegelian dialectic formula. Thesis versus antithesis equals synthesis. For example, if A, my idea of freedom conflicts with B, your idea of freedom, then C, neither of us, neither of us can be free until everyone agrees to be a slave. See how that works? I don't like that, do you? But it's a game. That's what they play. Right, exactly. The Soviet Union was based on the Hegelian dialectic as all Marxist writing. The Soviets didn't give up their Hegelian reasoning when they supposedly stopped being a communist country. They merely changed the dialectical language to fit into the modern version of Marxist thinking called communitarianism. American author Steve Montgomery explores Moscow's adept use of the Hegelian dialectic in Glasnost, a model of, a, of the village. Um, if the ideas, interpretations of of ex if, if the ideas, interpretations of experiences and the sources are all wrong, can a conclusion based on all these wrong premises be sound? The answer is no. Don't you understand? They give you two false premises and they say, well, this is it. This is it. So it's your choice. Well, I choose neither. They're both lies. You're lying to me. Well, either you're for this country or you're not for this country. Either you believe in liberty or you don't believe in liberty, the way they sell it. That's what they say to you. If you don't like it, get out. What well, you mean I don't I don't think you should kick people out of the country based on what they believe? No, that's not liberty. Well then you're for the Muslims taking over America. So then how did you come to that wonderful thought there? How did you come to that? That's I mean, I know you meditated that on a, a long time, like three seconds, but where did that come from exactly? Because that's stupid. Just because I don't want to pe That's like telling people that, that didn't want the Jews to be kicked out of, didn't want to out the Jews. Well, that's f because you're for the Jewish takeover of the world. No, because that's a false premise. That's not true. That's not true. I mean, last time I checked the Bible, it says that this is the time of the Gentiles. I don't know. I mean, we have no king but Caesar. And Caesar rules. Yeah. And yeah, there are Jews that work for the Pope, and they're high level, and they run finances, and they're very good at it. But they still work for the Pope. Yeah. And that's easily proven. Instead of that fake picture that people pass around of Rockefeller and the Pope kissing Rockefeller's finger and all that stuff. And it's not even Rockefeller. It's a phony picture. It's not even a real picture. It's phony. And everybody's like, see, I told you. The Pope answers to Rockefeller. Yeah, he's real afraid of him. 
That's why he goes through like every country wherever he goes, and he's a known pedophile and and runs the biggest pedophile ring in the whole world. He's the biggest religious pimp in the whole world. And he walks across any country, does whatever he wants to do, and nobody stops him. Okay, I better keep going. Two false premises do not make a sound conclusion, even if the argument follows the formula. Three, four, five, or six false premises do not all combine to make a conclusion sound. You must have at least one sound premise to reach a sound conclusion. Logical mathematical formulas are only the basis for deductive reasoning. Equally important is knowledge of semantics or considering the meanings of the words used in the argument. Just because an argument fits the formula, it does not necessarily make the conclusion sound. Hegel knew this when he designed his dialectic. He already knew it. So, so in other words, here's another example. Here, I'll give you this example again. No vote for Trump is a vote for Hillary. Only if I accept your flawed premise. That has no... Right, but if you don't vote for Hillary, it's not a vote for Trump, right? Do you see how backwards that is? That's called psychology. That's philosophy. That's all that is. And you fell for it. You've been boxed in there, and you've been told this. And I was like, no, I'm checking out of this. Nope. I ain't playing your game. You're all ran by the devil. Hey, I got the first hand. When I went, when I went to that convention, and I was a delegate for Ron Paul, and I saw his platform, and I saw Mitt Romney have like 150 lawyers there to stop him from taking over that convention and stop us from just kicking all those bums straight out of there, I knew it was all a scam. When every single delegate, practically, we won the super majority of delegates there. But you weren't going to. I mean, they had Romney videos running. They had everything. You weren't going to get past any of that. They already had it. No, we've already determined this is what's going to happen. The Galen dialectic. By the way, there's no true there's no substantial difference between the two. They're both the same. Right. Because you just tell them the truth. There's no difference. You're both the same. The Republican Party, the Democrat, they're both the same. Right. So here's how it works. If one was true, truly good, then the other would then the other is truly bad. So that's how they say it. So if you, Hillary, she's evil. So that makes Trump lesser evil. No, wouldn't that make them both evil? Stephen, no, you're supposed to, you, you have to choose between those two. No, why? I don't want to choose. I don't have to. No, I don't. Right. Yeah, render under Caesar, yeah. By the way, neither are constitutional. Neither are good people. They're both corrupt. And just because Republicans say they're pro-life doesn't mean they're right. And just because Hillary is evil doesn't mean that Trump is right. It doesn't mean Trump is good. They throw you into this right-left paradigm and say, this is your choice. And I'll tell you what, there are gatekeepers of the right-left paradigm. And new ones have arose like Alex Jones, the biggest gatekeeper for the right-left paradigm out there. That man is responsible for changing the public opinion and the truth or network uh, uh, towards Donald Trump. He single-handedly, single-handedly became the Sean Hannity of the truth movement and sold every bit of any principle. How do you have a video called 9-11, The Road to Tyranny, all right, which was solid information? How do you go from that and preaching on a police state? There's a police state everywhere. Look out, the police state is coming. The road to tyranny is here by this video. How do you go, how do you, how do you go from that to... Yeah, to endorsing Donald Trump, who is having the head of Homeland Security 
Rudy Giuliani is who he wants to be head of Homeland Security. Rudy Giuliani, one of the one of the the number one men in the playbook for for 9/11 and what took place at Ground Zero, the cover up. He handled the cover up. And Jones could be on record as stating such. But what did he do? You know, he never worked that hard to see Ron Paul elected. He only had Ron Paul on his show like a couple times. He never pushed an everyday agenda, Ron Paul, Ron Paul, Ron Paul, Ron Paul. He didn't do that. Why? Because that was a true platform. See, that was breaking out of the Hegelian dialectic. You know, they, he, he even tried to fool people and put Ron Paul on there to see if Ron Paul would throw him a bone. See, if, He wanted to see if Ron Paul would throw him a bone for, for uh, Donald Trump, and Ron Paul was like, no. There's nothing redeeming about him. Cut that off. Why? Because that man and in media and everybody else are designed to, as a gatekeeper to keep you stuck in the Rush Limbaugh used to be the most effective one for the right left paradigm. But as soon as the alternative media came around and and and, and the New World Order uh, and after 9-11, people started waking up to things and seeing the tyranny that was there and seeing that it was all fake. Then Alex Jones started to rise up. Alex Jones was a phony. Uh, he was exposed by uh, Bill Bill Cooper a long time ago as a phony. That he was nothing but a phony and a liar. Okay? Right, he said Russia was attacking us on Y2K and that, that this was all going down. He was I mean his it was awful. I listened to the whole thing, it was terrible. Anyway, he just he was he was lying. He was lying. He was just plain lying. See, why are you bringing this up? Because I want you to understand something that there there are a million and by the way, Jones is being paid very well to do what he's doing. He his video had like in a matter of an hour, his video had 400,000 views. 400,000 views. And even, uh, I, I haven't seen what's his face in there for a while, Jakari, Jackson, or whatever. I, I, don't th I think he's like distancing himself. He, he already said, uh, I'm not voting for Trump. Because it's very plain that you can't have any credibility and vote for, the, and, and vote for that guy. And you certainly can't be Alex Jones and have access to all this information and this proof of 9-11 and everything else and push people into a right-left paradigm. You cannot do that. Yeah, you cannot expose all these things and push people into... So these are the gatekeepers of the right-left. And he single-handedly has put millions, and I mean millions upon millions of truthers, back into the right-left paradigm like that. He did it like that. And Matt Drudge, too, right. And now what's and Drudge is rewarding him too. Because he posts all his videos and links to his show and everything else. And boom, big money, big money, big money. You have to choose between two wrong parties and the lesser of two evils. Why do I have to choose between those two parties? What if both of them are wicked and, and I can't and, and they don't follow the founding con the constitution? They don't they don't follow the uh the they don't honor the Bill of Rights. Neither one of these people do. So why would I vote for them when they're not consistent with my principles and the principles of the Word of God? Why would I vote for them? Why would I? Because if you don't, then the worst person is going to get in. Well, that might wake America up then. See, if the worst, if, if we woke up and, and Jezebel and Ahab were back in the White House, maybe some people would start waking up and saying, you know what, I think we've got to do something about this. Yeah. We got to snap out of this. This is a game. These people really don't want to make America great again. How I mean, how are you Alex Jones and go from Ron Paul to Donald Trump? Why? Well, you know why you know his 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 uh, platform is real? He spoke against corporate fascism and the welfare and the and the welfare state. He spoke against both sides. And his point was, you don't know, you don't kick people out for what they believe, but you don't offer them all the goodies to come over the border either. If you stop the flow of money and stop paying people to come over here and make it lucrative for people not to work, then guess what? They won't do it. That was his answer. Not block off everybody and not, and 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 if they, if it, this is listen. This is all a setup. I want you to understand something. Here's the setup. 
Right now it's going after Islam, and then laws are going to be crafted to fight Islam. Those are going to happen. When those laws are crafted to fight Islam, they are going to turn around and they're going to be used against Christians. That's the real game plan is to use them, and it will be a man that comes in that James Dobson and that wicked whore Jezebel Paula White laid hands on and gave more devils to Donald Trump. Okay, and Kenneth Copeland, who is like the granddaddy of them all, devil-possessed. All right? Those people laid hands on him, and those people, somebody like him will be able to push laws against Christians. They're going to lay the groundwork for him under the guise of Islam, but it's going to be against us. Exactly like they do now. That's what I'm doing. I'm swifting. Donald Trump is not a constitutional liber libertarian minded man he will control and use fear and that's what they've used to write in fear just like obama used fear to get into office he used fear to get into office they would not let you get a man like even Rand paul who was not is not that not as good as his dad's platform they would not let him get in they wouldn't even let him get, he was the best candidate they ran that that anybody ran and notice how he was the fir one of the first ones pushed out why? Because he was the grown-up on stage that says, no, you can't pay for any of this stuff, and no, you can't do any of this stuff. And the Constitution doesn't give you the right to bar Muslims and do this and do that. That's not, you can't do that. You don't have any authority to do that. And what about the Federal Reserve? Why don't we look at the Federal Reserve? Oh, get you out of there. Get out of here. Okay, here's the Hegelian dialectic. We got to look at China, because China's manipulating currency. So what did I do? I just did a slide of hand to you. But the Federal Reserve's over here, and they're the ones that control all the currency. They're the ones that are robbing us. They're robbing our children of the land that we fought and died for. Our people did. Wait wait a minute. What's going on here? Oh, but it's China. Wait, no, what about the Federal Reserve? No, his masters, Donald Trump's masters, run the Federal Reserve. Listen, you don't become a real estate mogul without banks backing you. I, in case you haven't figured it out yet, he's not. you don't just sit with a bank account with billions of dollars in it all the time like that's normal. You had to get buying power from somewhere. Somebody has to loan you money. And who was that? Well, we know who it is. Here's another example of this Hegelian dialectic, and it's in the spiritual, it's in... in, in in church, Calvinist versus Armenian. Well, if you're not a Calvinist, then you're an Armenian. Why? Because you say so? Because you say so? Oh, did God call me an Armenian? God named me after that man? I follow, they, that, that's what God said? Well, if you're not a Calvinist, then you're an Armenian. Who says? Who says? Oh, because Calvin said so. Oh, I forgot. Calvin, your god of philosophy. And his Neoplatonic philosophy from Augustine. Oh, I'm getting ready. Believe me, I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm getting ready. I'm getting ready, and I, I don't know how much longer I can hold back. I'm just telling you, I... It's coming because I can't take, I don't like somebody telling me what I am and not letting me define what I believe from the word of God. Amen. Who gave you the right to tell me what I am? Oh, you're a Calvinist or you're an, Ar if you don't follow Calvin, well, then you're an Armenian work salvation guy or you're a Pelagian. Is that what they call him? Pelagian? Pelagian, Pelagian. I don't care. Pelican, whatever you want to call him. I'm none of it. I'm not any of it. I'm not a Calvinist and I'm not an Armenian and I don't care if you like it. How about that one? I don't care who's listening, you don't like it. I'm not named after Calvin. I don't believe what Calvin preached. And I don't believe what Armenians preach either. And, and if you really want to know the truth of it, I think they're all a bunch of infant sprinkling heretics. Amen. I think they're a bunch of baby baptizing uh, uh, dominion theologians. Amen. 
I think if they get into power, they like to kill people like me because I'm one of those old-fashioned Baptists. Yeah. That you find that Baptist in the Word of God, too. Yeah, I just believe the Bible. So I refuse for you to lock me in your Hegelian dialectic, and I have to follow it. No, you have to be a Calvinist. You have, no, I don't have to be either one of them. I don't have to be either one of them. Well, if you don't believe in the sovereignty of God, then you believe in the, you, you believe in the free will of man. Why can't I believe in both? Why don't you study both and see what that is, study what the Bible says about that? Say, say, well, say well, how, you think God just walks around and says, well, you're not personally responsible for anything. Because I have sovereignly controlled everything. <laughs> Hang on a second. And that's how you live your life. Because I sovereignly controlled you. And I have this ro remote in heaven, God does, and he just goes like this. And you... Oh, I can't take it. I'm telling you, I'm going to nail it. And you know what? I don't care if they get mad because, no, I, I, I know that somebody doesn't get saved except the Holy Ghost of God convicts them. I understand what that is because I was born again by the Spirit of Almighty God, and I didn't do a thing for it, okay? And I understand that full well, but I also understand that God does not, God does have man, man does have personal responsibility, and God says it in his word. He is personally responsible. You don't go to hell because God foreordained you to go to hell. Well, I'm sorry, but God, rep God, you were born. You have to understand something. You were born to be reprob reprobated to hell. That's because Calvin says so. Oh, well, because Calvin says it, then by all means, that, that, that wicked murdering devil, I should, I should just follow suit with what Calvin says. And I have to follow Calvin, right? Otherwise, I have to follow our meeting. So why do I care what, any, what those two men think anyway? Is there some reason why I'm supposed to put those two men above God? Is there some reason why I have to follow that instead of the Word of God? No, that's the Hegelian dialectic. And by the way, Augustine was a master of philosophy. Right, right. That's exactly what it is. I don't have to follow either one of them. I don't have to believe either one of them. I have, I, I have the individual soul liberty. Ooh, don't tell Calvin that. Um, I, I have the individual soul liberty to believe what the Bible says or not to. No, and that's not a work, right? <laughs> Faith and repentance is works if it's not. Yeah, anyway, I don't have time to get into those. I'm going to. But anyway, needless to say, that's another one of those Hegelian dialectics. Well, you have to. You're not. You de facto have to. And you have to agree with every definition that Calvin had of his little tiptoeing through the tulips, his little flowery. What, what, what's, it, what's it called? What do you call it? I didn't hear what you said. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, if you don't tiptoe toe through the tulips and, and believe everything Calvin said, well, then you're just a heretic. Oh, and that says that in the Word of God too, doesn't it? So Calvin gets to give his own definitions, but nobody else does. Right. Only Calvin. <laughs> oh, I forgot. Only Calvin gets to do that. Yeah. Give me a break. Calvin's not my God, okay? Amen. And neither is Arminius, and, and neither is Pelagius or any of these other guys. All right? I don't have to follow any of them. I do have to follow the Word of God, though. And I do have to be faithful to the Word of God. Well, that was fun. I better keep going now. I am almost done, really, I think. I think. I don't know. We'll see. My Bible speaks of God's sovereignty and man's personal responsibility and his free will. And it is a mystery. If I'm not Calvinist, how am I automatically Armenian? Good question, isn't it? I'll tell you how. Thesis versus antithesis equals synthesis. That's how. You're forced into these two systems. Just like I don't follow any strict in anything. Well, you're either covenant theologian or you're dispensationalist. Well, I believe in some principles of dispensationalism, but I don't follow Darby's system of dispensationalism. I don't have to. I have to follow the Bible. And that doesn't mean that I'm following Darby if I see that God handled things differently in different dispensations. And God was dealing with different people. 
I don't, I, I'm not, that is, there's, there's, we've really got to get over these labels that people throw us in and say like, well, you have to be this, you have to be that, you have to be this. Why? I think they're both wrong in some ways. I think both those systems are flawed. And I think the truth is straight down the middle. That's what I believe. Yeah, I believe it's a narrow way. Yeah. Absolutely, covenant is really wrong. They don't even know the people they're dealing with and who they're talking to. It's really a problem when you when you when you try to make national Israel the church, the church, and you got to baptize your baby. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Dominionism. It all. Okay, we can just go on and on and on with that. I mean, it's just. But anyway, the antithesis is a critical perspective on the thesis. the The synthesis solves the conflict between the thesis and the antithesis by reconciling their common truths and forming a new proposition. That's how it works. Here's another one. Well, you're either Catholic or Protestant. No, I'm not. I'm neither. I'm not Catholic, and I'm not Protestant. What's that? Yeah, we protested long before before the uh, Luther nailed his little page down there on the on the. Uh, you know, before Luther. By the way, coming soon, Luther's baptismal regeneration doctrine refuted. That's coming soon. That's right. Here's another one. Uh, when you think about this, but when you think about this, I've proven from the Bible and from history that Baptists were before Protestants. If I accept that, you, if I accept your premise that I have to be Catholic or I have to be Protestant, then you get to solve the problem with that faulty premise. The Catholics say, "Well, they're the original church." The Protestants admit that they came from the Reformation and sought to reform the church, meaning the Catholic Church. But Baptists believe, yeah, exactly. But Baptists believe what the Bible says that there would never cease to be a local visible assembly that held to Baptists or biblical principles. Not always called Baptists. We'll get to those names. Matthew chapter sixteen, verse number eighteen. I just believe the Bible, and I say also unto thee that thou art Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. That's what he said. And then he also said in Ephesians three twenty one, unto him be glory in the church by Christ Jesus throughout all ages, world without end. Amen. There never ceased to be a church. There never ceased to be Luther rediscovers salvation by grace through faith. Oh, I didn't know it was lost. Why don't we look at the trail of blood that went through there and see if it was lost? Oh, but Luther rediscovered it. Oh, great, Luther did. He did, really. Well, why did he believe that baptizing infants baptized them into salvation? Because he was of his mother, Rome. Yep. Amen. That's why. And as soon as he got power, yeah, they are. And as soon as he got power, what did he do? Well, you ought to put, tell those princes, you ought to put those Anabaptists down. You ought to kill them, guys. Yep. Mm-hmm. Because Luther, he rediscovered salvation. I, I, I can't believe it. When I read that, I just laugh at it. Oh, really, Luther rediscovered it? Well, then why were all the Waldensians being burned? Why, why was the Pope raiding them? Why were the Novationists, the Petrobrusians, the Waldensians, the Lollards, the Novationists, the Donatists, why were they all persecuted? And what did they hold up? Salvation by grace through faith. And, bat, and a pure church a, and believer's baptism, they all died for it. No, we won't accept Rome's baptism. We believe, in, we believe in liberty of conscience and believer's baptism that you have to make a decision. You have to repent and put your faith and trust in Jesus Christ. That You, you just don't get baptized as a baby. Right, because they got it from Rome. Yep. Right. But see, they want to force you into that system, though, the Hegelian dialectic. No, you're either this or that. No, we never. there never ceased to be a time when there was no, new, no local New Testament church that was here in this world. Because Christ promised, we believe. You believe in Baptist church perpetuity? Well, of course I do. Amen. I believe Baptists that follow the Bible, okay, I believe that. It's laid down in Scripture that there would always be a church. And I believe you can find them, and you find the Word of God with that church. And you find them going through, and you find them suffering greatly. You find them being burned. You find their children, you find them baking their Bible into bread so they could hide it. You find them, their houses being burned, their children being dropped, their, their babies being dropped and smashed their heads against rocks. You find Rome burning all their books and destroying everything that they had. That's where you find them. So forgive me if I won't just believe your little fairy tale 
of Martin Luther rediscovering salvation by grace through faith after he got knocked in the head or something, whatever happened to him. I don't know. Oh, that, no, that was Back to the Future and the Flux Capacitor, I think. I don't know. Whichever. The stories are very similar to the same. But, um, the, yeah, exactly. Yeah, that was when he hit his head and yeah, had a revelation. Yeah. Did she hit her head too? Okay. Okay. George Hegel's original intent was to devise a method to resolve disagreements and control outcomes. The Hegelian formula is typically expressed as follows. Thesis represents an idea or opinion. Antithesis represents the counter opinion or the opposite view. Synthesis represents the domain where thesis and antithesis intersect and overlap. So anyway, that's their compromise. The interesting and powerful feature of the Hegelian dialectic is once the circular argument has reached synthesis, a new thesis can be created and the process begins anew incrementally and progressively moving forward toward the next pre predetermined outcome. They already have it all figured out. They, they're controlling the game, so they have it figured out. So in other words, with the election, as long as I choose the players, it matters not. I control the outcome. They already chose the players. You see it, I mean, you could see in some of the stuff that was leaked that they already kind of knew who they were going against. They already kind of had an idea. And they chose all the players. Well, why were all these 10 people the best choices that were up there, the 16 men there? Why were they the best choices? Because they told you they were. That's why. They told you they were, and that's why. Right. Right. Matthew chapter 16, verse number 6, Jesus said, Take heed and beware of the leaven of the Pharisees and of the Sadducees. This is another illustration, you know, that Hegelian dialectic or the logical argument. Here are two denominations, the Pharisees and the Sadducees, each inspired by Satan, whose purpose was to contest the laws and ordinances of the Old Testament. One was the thesis, the other antithesis. Neither could agree on the word or recognize it manifested before them. They couldn't. All they had an agreement was, we hate Jesus. Yep, yep, right. So what's this world coming to? Well, if you step out of their box, well, we both hate you. We got something in common. We both hate you. That's right. That's right. The synthesis through the apostasy of both parties was their own damnation through rejection and crucifixion of the Messiah. Even their high priest declared his blood be upon us and upon our people and our children forever. Now, here's another part of this that you have to understand. I want to read you this, and I want you to think about this. War, the organized conflict of nations for the Hegelians, is only the visible outcome of the clash between ideas. Following the outbreak of war in 1939, social creditor C.H. Douglas said this, The international money marketeers care no more for the immolation of the peoples of a continent than that for the death of a sparrow. And unfortunately, the world is in the grasp of theorists, to whom misery and death of millions is a grain of sand beside the working out of their designs. That's why when people send their children to the military, I'm like, why are you doing this? They don't care. You're not fighting a war on terror. Right. There's no such thing as a war on an idea. There's a war. You have wars against nations, not ideas. When someone attacks you, you fight them. If they don't attack you, you don't fight them. That's the war. Not on an ideology. That's the Hegelian dialectic. That's what that is. Because you never end an ideology. So, you, what's that? Right. But you will never, yeah, with words, but not with war. If you reason, if you sit down and reason and you talk through it, why do you think, oh, here's, here's where it's going to get, okay, here's where it gets deep, because exactly what he said to you, he said words. Did you hear what he said? He said you end it with words then why don't we ever know the good things that Iran says? Iran says good things? Why don't we hear the good things that Russia says? Why is that stifled in the media? Because they want war. 
They want you to think that all those Russians hate you. And all these other people hate Well, Why do they hate us? They hate us for our freedoms. No, I pretty much think they hate them because you kill their children. That's why they hate you. You sent your stinking Air Force over there to bomb them. That's why they hate you. Stay home and quit putting your boots on their ground and leave them alone. Then they won't hate you. And if they do hate you and they come after you, then you fight them. But if we don't fight them over there, then we have to fight them over here. So why is that a bad thing? Yeah, they're terrorists. Stop resisting. <laughs> Sorry. Stop resisting. Stop resisting. <laughs> well, that's that's the Hegelian dialectic. But when you sit down and talk with people, that's what ends it. They don't want to do that. As John Dewey, the Hegelian darling of the modern educational system, puts it, War is the most effective preacher of the vanity of all merely finite interests. It puts an end to that selfish egoism of the individual by which he would claim his life and his property as his own or his family's. We all forget everything and come at it and go to war. Above all, the Hegelian doctrine is the divine right of states rather than the divine right of kings. The state for Hegel and Hegelians is God on earth. The march of God in history is the cause of the existence of states. Their foundation is the power of reason realizing itself as will. Every state, whatever it be, participates in the divine essence. The state is not the work of human art. Only reason could produce it. For Hegel, the individual is nothing. The individual has no rights. Morality consists solely in following a leader. Sound familiar? Just follow Trump. Make America great again. I mean, that's just... <sighs> okay, now, I, I, I mean, they won big, huge. They had the red hat. They had the red hat. All right? And they had the slogan. And that's all you need for dumbed down Americans. You just needed the hat and the slogan. I mean, Hogan, he just had the t shirt and he ripped it off. That's all you needed. I'm telling you, this is the worst episode. This is like an endless episode. This is like WrestleMania 24 hours a day, seven days a week, WrestleMania. That's what it is. You don't believe me? No, listen, I'm an expert on WrestleMania. Let me tell you. I'm an expert on wrestling. Having When I was a lost man, I watched wrestling so much. Even after I got saved, I watched it a lot. But I watched it ever since I was a, a little child. And I can tell you that all they did was run the greatest scam. They ran the greatest WWE babyface versus evil that you could ever imagine. I watched, let me tell you something, I watched it for 25 years, okay? I watched it for a long time, and I know how it works, and that's exactly how it works. Donald Trump is nothing more than Hulk Hogan not ripping his shirt off and having a slogan. All you need in America is you have a slogan and a hat, you have some kind of prop, and you're going and, and to go all the way. And what did he do? Make America great again. And here's a guy that went out there. He really resonated in reaching America. Why? Well, because that billionaire put on a 30-cent hat. Dude, I mean, it is a bad-looking hat. I mean, and he's just a regular ham and egger. And he put that, and he put that, he put that red hat on, and he dumbed down his speech and said stuff like, like a lot slower for people to understand. No, I'm I'm sorry. I'm not kidding you. He, you don't. You're not a billionaire, and you don't talk like that in meetings. Have you ever watched him on The Apprentice where he's like straightforward? He's like, "You're fired," and he talks like that because that's who he. That, that he didn't campaign like that. He campaigned like a ham and egger. And then the la and then when the contract for the 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 American voter came up, then he switched, and then the rest of the Republicans were oh, okay. We'll vote for him. But he resonated with all these people. Why? Well, he's just a down-home guy. He's a billionaire. He ain't down-home. He don't know what down-home is. You think that guy drives? You think that guy worries about bills?
But you were told that in the greatest scam ever pulled. Make America great again. It's the same thing as it's 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 the same thing as saying Hulkamania. What you gonna do when Hulkamania runs wild on you? That's all they did. I'm sorry, but that's what you gonna do when Hulkamania runs wild on you. That's it's the same thing. I'm sorry, it's the same thing. What? Or the NWO, right? What did they get? You, what did they get you to do with that? They got you to vote for an end. They got you to. They popularized the NWO in wrestling and made it the most popular thing ever. And they had. They had the uh, the uh, synthesis. The uh, anti. Ant, is it? Thank you. Ant, and, and then the. Uh, I forgot now. I can't even think. I'm just. I'm too busy laughing about this wrestling. I keep thinking about wrestling. I'm sorry. But anyway, you know. But that's what they did, right? And what do they have? It's the it's it's just the greatest scam ever pulled. And because because at the end they were yeah, they were all on the same team. The New World Order, they were all working together. The guy that was set up Eric Bischoff that was running the WCW, he was already he was he was working with Hogan behind the scenes and they were all working the same. They were all together. He sold them down the river. Just and what is that? That's our government. Same thing. All working together. They're all on the same side. Theirs. That's all it is. That's right. Compare the, to the spirit in the letter of the Australian Constitution. It says, whereas the people grant the state some powers and reserve all, all others to the people, whilst it recognizes no state denomination, it places the Christian God as its head. Unlike Hegel's, the state is God on earth. To elitists, like the order in the USA, the group in the UK, Illuminati in Germany, and the Politburo in Russia, the state is supreme. And a self-appointed elite running the state acts as God on earth. What's that a picture of? The beast system and the beast as a man as a figurehead. Same thing. Statism. Manipulation of left and right in domestic USA where Wall Street supports. Here you go, ready? Both Republicans and Democrats. I'm against Wall Street corruption. They're paying you. They're paying you. They're paying both of you. Goldman Sachs pays both of you. They're funding your stupid speech. You can travel around. They're paying for your gas. Well, I mean, I thought you guys were enemies. Come on, man. It's just like it's just like wrestling. You go back. They're 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 enemies out in front. But then when you go back in the back seat, they're all just high five and having fun, drinking, partying. No, they are drinking, partying, sacrificing children, kidnapping, kidnapping babies and women, and yeah, I don't have time for that, but I gotta keep moving. It's just like the liberal, the liberal, the Labor Party over in Australia says it's duplicated in the international field where left and right political structures are artificially constructed and collapsed. In the drive for a one-world synthesis. In fact, left and right are two controlled factions of the Illuminati. They're both controlled. No Republicans are against that. No Republicans run a wing of that. They are a wing of it. Textbooks present war. Listen to this. Here's another part of this Hegelian dialectic. Textbooks present war and revolution as more or less accidental results of conflicting forces. Like, oh, we, I mean. The decay of political negotiations into physical conflict comes about, according to these books, after valiant efforts to avoid war took place. We tried to reason with them. We tried to reason with Saddam Hussein, but he would not step down. Smoke him out. So we had to go over there because they have weapons of mass destruction. And then they have a dinner every year, the Alfred B. Smith dinner. Is that what it's called? Al Smith dinner. And what do they have, the Al Smith dinner, where, where Bill Clinton, Hillary, or, uh, Hillary Clinton, and Donald Trump were with the uh, bishop uh, or, Timothy, or Cardinal Timothy Dolan? And they're together, and they're all telling jokes and laughing about there. Bush at that same dinner a few years before that, <laughs> didn't find those WMDs, did I? And was laughing about it. You just sent thousands of people to their death, you piece of garbage. And you're telling a joke about it. 
Yeah, no weapons over here. <laughs> and you're telling a joke about it. And guess what? Nobody, it's like, it reminds me of in the WWF, they have the Slammy Awards where they all get up and they, they, they talk to each other and they all win. I'm telling you, it's the same thing. It's no different. Stop being a fool. Wake up and snap out of it. Yeah, he is. And he's just like, oh, we can, you know, work together. And that was just a little bit of a bad joke that Donald Trump told about Hillary. I wish he wouldn't have said that. But, you know, they're going to be able to work together. And they're all laughing and sitting down and enjoying. And, like, Obama and Bush are at the same dinner. And they're, like, laughing and having a good time. Wait, I thought you guys were. Nah, man, that's just for the cameras. We're not enemies. Come on. Come on. Listen to me. War is always a deliberate, creative act by individuals. Always. The tribunals that investigated Nazi war criminals were careful to censor any records of Western assistance to Adolf Hitler. Ford? And Western textbooks on Soviet economic development omit any descriptions of the economic and financial aid given to the 1917 revolution and subsequent economic development by Western firms and banks. How about the Bush family helped them? They helped. Uh, Pres Prescott Bush. Prescott Bush funded Nazi Germany. Well, not Brother Bush. That wicked traitor. <laughs> Revolution is always recorded as a spontaneous event by the political or economical deprived against autocratic state. Western textbooks never reveal the evidence that revolutions need finance. <laughs> and the source of the finance in many cases traces back to Wall Street. Companies like what? Big companies? Who owns Wall Street? Well, the Vatican owns quite a bit of it. A little truth will be left out. Of course, our Western history is every bit as distorted, censored, and largely useless as that of Hitler's Germany, the Soviet Union, or Communist China. No Western foundation will award grants to investigate their own benefactors. Few Western scholars can survive by re researching such theses, and, pub and publishing houses daring to accept such manuscripts suffer intimidation or even violence from the establishment. The recent trials of David Irving and his erstwhile publisher bear this out. We will explore thesis and antithesis in the development and construction of the Soviet Union thesis and Hitler's Germany antithesis. We will also explore the continuation of this dialectic conflict into the last few decades, specifically in China today, and show that the purpose is to create a new synthesis, a new world order along, along Hegelian lines where the state is absolute and the individual can find freedom only in blind obedience to the state. Let me ask you a question. Why is China a competitor of ours, and why are they a threat to us today? How did they get power? Who funded China? What happened after the World War? And who did we, instead of annihilating somebody, if, you were, if they were really your enemy, what did they do? Well, the New World Order's whole plan, what they planned on was building China as this Hegelian dialectic. They had to build an enemy. They just destroyed one. They got to build another one. B, debt. And C, technology. These have become diluted over time. They don't work as well as they did back in the 50s because there's more of an open area now. By and large, control of information has been successful because of the intellectual world is still locked into a phony verbal battle between left and right. Whereas the real struggle is the battle between individual freedom and the encroaching power of the absolute state. Four. Money. They said by the turn of the century, communist China will be the superpower. Look at the facts and look at print. Why? So there's number four. It says to give subtly to the simple, to the young man, knowledge and discretion. You got to start weighing some things and looking at some things and using some wisdom and use it. Listen, look at the facts and independent evidence and proof. The truth movement is, and and you've 
and you have to look at the facts. It doesn't matter what someone's feed me. State can clothe me. State can get me jobs. State can make America great again. State can do everything. It's not people that make it. It's not God ordained people or, or people under God that make a country better. People that follow biblical principles. It's not people that can do that and to make a country better, right? It's state that can make it. It's the president it's the office that can make a man better you see what i mean that's the, that's the game plan so state is god so government is god because they control all the outcomes because they're deceived they're deceived and their pastors won't talk about New World Order, won't talk about conspiracy, won't talk about Hegelian dialectic, won't talk about things like that. And some of these guys, I, I, I'm almost done, but i got to say this. Some of these guys know about these things. They know about these pastors right now. Listen, I am very disappointed in some of these men. Very disappointed because these men know better. Now listen to me. I know a pastor right now that has preached more conspiracies, New World Order stuff, Satan, technological witchcraft, and all kinds of other things. And you're telling me he couldn't do five seconds of research to figure out that Tim Kaine and, and Hillary Clinton and all those people and, and not understand the fact that, or I mean, that Donald Trump and, and the people that work with Donald Trump and the Jesuits and everything else, and that, that he is, he's not an outsider? that he's part of the establishment. You couldn't figure that out. You can't figure out where Donald Trump gets his money at. You can't figure out that, that he's not the viable alternative, that they're all crooked. Come on, man. But Hillary's cr crimes are way worse than Trump, so we got to put Trump in. The Galen dialectic. And there's, yeah, it is bad reasoning. It's absolutely, but it's philosophical. And it's... It's Plato's work all over again. So God, the government is God. That's what it's all about for them. But one day Jesus Christ is coming back again. And he's going to crush the new world order. And he's going to destroy their wicked system. And God's people better wake up and start using their God-given brain and start using and start yielding to the spirit of God and start to look at this stuff and say, you know what, something is not right here. instead of giving in to the system and the Hegelian dialectic. Father, Lord, we thank you. Thank you for your words. Thank you for the truth of them. And, Lord, thank you that we can see very plainly this is nothing but the devil's trick of the old Pharisees and Sadducees. And, Lord, it's, it's just the devil's trick to try to keep us stuck so we won't follow the word of God completely, but that we'll be trapped in this right-left paradigm. Help us, Lord, we pray. Not to fall for this, but to step back and weigh everything according to the scriptures. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.